God calling. You know, often I read, I hear, I see, I examine sometimes what people say to me about how God needs your hands and your feet, or he needs you to do something for him, as though there is no God, or if he is God, he's somehow omnipotent, or he only does things for people in like big ways, like some kind of healing of cancer, or, you know, stopping a tornado from hitting, or somehow doing only the miraculous, or he only works in great revivals, you know. God can only do <coughs> what we pray for him to do, because God has to, you know, honor us in some way that he can't do something. And, you know, be very careful what you say, because God may show you the day that will come when absolutely nothing of what you say about God is true when you say that he can't, because God can do anything, anywhere, anytime, any place that he chooses. He's not limited by himself, nor is he limited by us. He's not limited by his own statements or limited by our interpretation of them. You see, God is God. And the sooner people realize that, the easier it is to understand and accept that God chooses to allow us some part of participation with him in knowing him in a more intimate and personal way so that we can understand a lot about him. But there is absolutely no way in any form in any shape, in any understanding, in any teaching, or in any doctrine that can put you in the place of God's mind and allow you to understand or to limit God in any way, shape, or form. It's absolutely impossible. You are a created being, as I am, and God is not. God created you. So, get rid of the idea to begin with of God can't, because God does. Now. Besides that, you know, people act like in their life that to ask God to do something is like absolutely the worst thing in the world to do because first you got to go do it yourself. God doesn't need you for anything. God will allow you to participate with him and chooses to allow you to be blessed by being with him as he does something in a person's life. But frankly, he can do it himself and he will because even to the point of the gospel being preached into the whole world, he sends angels through the sky and declares to the entire universe, literally, that this is the eternal gospel. And he preaches it through those messengers. And they will see them. And they will see angels flying in the sky. Literally. Physically. And hear audibly with their ears. There will be nothing nowhere that anyone can't say they didn't hear or feel inside of them to know that they know that they heard. And so... God isn't limited in any way. It's only because of our limitations we try to expect to do it in a certain way. So sometimes we need to turn it over to God and let Him do what He chooses to do as opposed to what we want to do. That's called trusting in the Lord with all your heart. Because God desires for us to love Him for what He's done. And the only way we'll see what He's doing is by acknowledging that He can do it better than we can. Because when we get in the way, unfortunately, we take credit for or somehow we declare that we did it without him in some kind of participation way that we get in the glory and he's not. And we say, oh yeah, well, you know, I owe it all to Jesus. No, that's not the way it works. Because you see, you already owe everything to Jesus. The very fact that you exist is just because God allows it to. There's nothing else that you could say, do, move, or have a being except that God allows it in His grace and mercy for you to have a life. So as you live your life, He wants you to come into fellowship or to follow Him and to begin to know Him in a more intimate and personal way. And Jesus demonstrated that by showing us that the Father wants to know us as intimately as Jesus knew Him. And so, in the same way that you have a family and you want to be close to them, Learn to get to know your family in heaven. Get to know the Holy Spirit in a personal, intimate way. Just talk to Him simply. Not anything special or some weird spoken language that you have to babble or rabble. Because yes, there's a gift of tongues, but you don't need to do that. You can, but you don't need to. You can just talk to God normally. 
Get to know your Father in Heaven who loves you intimately and personally, who wants to be with you always, who wants you to be with Him throughout eternity. And get to know Jesus, because as you do know the Father, Son, and Spirit, they will reveal to you the heavenly scene, where you know of angels and you'll know of all these other angelic beings that exist in heaven that you haven't even begun to appreciate, much less to understand. And don't get hung up on them, because they're going to point to God. Everything is focused in on the Father, the central point of heaven, and all the eyes are turned towards Jesus and His Father by way of the Spirit pointing us and directing us in that way. So today in God Calling, consider well when you say that God can't, because God can. Your loved ones. Your loved ones are very safe in my keeping. Learning and loving and working, theirs is a life of happiness and progress. They live to serve and serve they truly do. They serve me and those they love. Ceaselessly they serve. But their ministrations, so many and so diverse, you see no more than those in my time on earth in human form could have seen in the angels who ministered unto me in the wilderness. How often mortals rush to earthly friends who can serve them in so limited a way when the friends who are freed from the limitations of humanity can serve them so much better, understand better, protect better, plan better, and even plead their cause with me. You do well to remember your friends in the unseen. Accompanying with them, the more you live in this unseen world, the gentler will be your passing when it comes. Earth's troubles and difficulties will seem, even now, less overwhelming as you look, not at the things that are seen, but at the real eternal life. And this is eternal life, that we may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Learning to know me draws that kingdom very near, and in me, and through the knowledge of me, the dear ones there become very near and clear. At times when you feel as though you've lost a loved one that you know has died in faith, you can't pray to them and get to know them and see them because they're gone. They're with the Lord. They have no business or interest in you anymore. They're with Jesus, trust me. But you know you shall see them again because eventually God will bring you to them and that you'll sense their presence in a way, not see them and not talk to them, but sense them in a way the closer you draw near to the moment of your death or departure, but also in a moment that you are brought into the fellowship of the Father and the Son, as well as in the communion of His Spirit in making us all one, so that we come to that place of not being so attached to this world, but being detached from it to become more likened to an earthly, uh, heavenly kingdom that God is bringing to us so that our loved ones that may have passed away, that maybe we feel remorse for and want to see, will be sensed in a way that you never thought of before. For myself, I know my mother, I had a vision of what she would be like in heaven, and God revealed it to me. But it wasn't me seeing her literally, it was me knowing that this was a vision from the Lord that he gave to comfort me when she departed. And it gave me great joy, because, believe me, she's at great peace. Are you at peace today? Get to know Jesus in a more personal way, but go beyond that. Get to know the Father. Get to know your Father in heaven. Get to begin to understand and appreciate Him as being able to do all things. Not you. He can. You can do so many things. It's true. With Him. But you can't do all things, but He can. So, get to know the man who knows that He can do all things and that He can cause you to appreciate him in a more intimate and personal way. And if you don't yet, ask him to change your mind. He can do that too.